It's time for the Nebraska Men's Basketball Coaches Show. On the right side to Hoiberg, right to left, top of the circle, reverses it off the floor. CJ, three is good! Got it! Man, all right! CJ Wilcher is on fire! Lawrence on the other end lays it up. Shot blocked by Williams! Into the hands of Lawrence! The baseball pass and the jam! The jambola by Gary on the other end! Lightning Hawks for the basketball. And in the passing lane with a steal as Hoiberg jumped in front of everybody. Puts it up on the other end. Got it. Hoiberg gets Nebraska shot in the arm. Defense turns into offense for Sam. Mass hands it off to Hoiberg. Coming right to left. Faces up. Throws back to Tominaka. Got a good look on the way. Got it. Got it. The net hangs up on the rim. It was so pure. Three ball. Another CBA three. Casey gives Nebraska the lead. Oh, here's Alec. Hands it off to Wiltshire. Three ball. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Huskers with their biggest lead. Now with Fred Hoiberg, here's your host, Jessica Cootie. Welcome in to our Nebraska men's basketball show. Happy Monday. I'm Jessica Cootie and uh, glad to have the head coach, Fred Hoiberg, here with us for the next hour. We'll be talking all things men's hoops, so get those questions in, 402-413-2400 on our text line for Coach Hoiberg. Well, Coach, glad you made it in. A burr, it's cold outside. It's brutal. Yeah, it's nasty. <laughs> it shouldn't be this way. Has this caused any issues for your team getting around, getting practice in? Uh, I mean, the only issue we had is we had to stay over in Iowa City. We yeah. were hoping to be able to get out of there after the game, but we got word after. In fact, going into it, we were packed. We were ready to go. And then uh, we got an update from the charter company saying that we were going to have to stay over. Just they didn't think it was safe enough to leave. So we got back to the hotel. I think it was a late game, obviously, with the 8.30 tip. And just it was a late night, you know, watching the film and, and trying to get an edit ready. Uh, to see what went wrong during that run in the second half. Not only the run in the second half, but the start. You know, they get off to a 17-2 to two start on us and f fought up uphill, give our guys credit. We came back and took a lead, and then uh, they went to a zone. We got a little stagnant. The middle was wide open on several occasions. We watched every one of those possessions today in our film session, and then we started working on Rutgers. So, you know, just a lot of things to learn from that game. Uh, but, yeah, to answer your question, Jessica, besides – that little hiccup, travel, getting back. Uh, everybody got there on time. We didn't have any issues with uh, with the weather. Uh, talked to Sam Hoiberg, uh, your son, earlier today, and we're going to hear from him coming up later in the show. But he was saying we were talking about this time of the year where you don't have classes, a lot of them, and you can kind of just focus on basketball and being in the gym. How much do you enjoy this time where it, it is kind of all about basketball? Yeah, it, it really is. A, it's a good time for us. We, you know, you're not – don't have to get them out of there to get them to class. We've we practice in the morning. We we changed to that a couple of years ago, and I really like that. You know, as opposed to making sure they get up, go to class, and then getting them in for an afternoon practice. We get them in the building. Uh, they're able to get lunch at the training table. They go to their tutor sessions, and then they're always going to be at class. So you know, I've really liked that. But you know, when you're on break like we are right now, it gives you the flexibility of bringing them back in. You can always bring them in and feed them. And it's, it's kind of been a weird schedule, to be honest with you, Jessica, with the Friday night games. We've had that two weeks in a row. So we, we had to, by rule, take the Saturday off, which that was going to a travel day for us anyway with, with the weather. And then we had to take yesterday off as well. And that was the one day off of the week. You still have to have an off day uh, per NCAA rule. At this time of year, you really don't want to have back-to-back -back days. But after the stretch we just played, I, I mean, it was a grueling stretch you play the late Purdue game uh that was one of those things where you wish you had about five days yeah. to recover to be able to you know celebrate the win a little bit uh we had to get over it quickly and we did not do a good job of that and you know you saw that with the start against Iowa and then I thought we got a little tired uh there in the second half mentally physically and Iowa just you know dominated us the last uh 12 14 minutes of that game but you know overall you know I think we're in a good place we had a great practice today one of our better practices of the year it's the response that we wanted mm -hmm. going into it. we talked a lot just about the things and the body language and you know when things went bad it just wasn't the same vibe that we had Indiana um, you know Michigan State certainly Purdue where you know we got in the huddle and those guys had already figured things out those guys had talked the issues that were going on on the floor with coverages those guys were talking to each other uh, in the Iowa game it was different it was you get in the huddle and, you know, it was almost like a little deer in headlights look when things got tough. And that's the, the challenge is when the adversity hits, how are you going to handle it? And ultimately, that, that's going to uh, define what type of year that we have here, whatever it is, the last 14 games 
of the conference season. Uh, we're in a good spot right now, like I said, uh, but we got to be better, and we have to respond better. We've done a pretty good job after losses, but after a win, you know, we just haven't responded very well. Uh, that was a big discussion in film before we watched all the clips. We just talked about a lot of different things, and I give our guys credit for responding. Now, we need to have another great day tomorrow and stack days together heading into a very tough environment that we're going to play on Wednesday night in Rutgers. Now, we got another quick turnaround before the home game, and, the, you know, late game for us in Rutgers, a 7 p.m. start, and then I think it's a three-and-a-half-hour uh, flight home, so we're going to have to get over that quickly. Whatever happens... Uh, in the game on Wednesday, we're going to have to get over it. And that's what, when you have a lot of games in a short amount of time, uh, that's the importance. I was laying down watching the Purdue game. Uh, they were playing Penn State. I think it was a 24-point game with about three to go. They came back, media timeout. And I thought Robbie Hummel just laid it out perfectly. And he talked about Purdue, you know, really being the standard in our league of a team that doesn't get too high and doesn't get too low. And I played that clip for our guys today. And, you know, they come into our place, we beat them by 16, and they bounce back and, you know, just completely dominate the next game from start to finish. And, you know, that's a big thing. The very best advice I ever got when I got into the NBA was from Reggie Miller. He called me Rook. He said, Rook, I'm just going to tell you right now in this business, he said, you can't let your highs get too high and you can't let your lows get too low. Hmm. And right now we're riding the wave of the highs and lows, the emotions, uh, it's a little bit like a roller coaster right now. So we need to get more even. Whatever is happening with our team, uh, wins, losses, anything in between, you know, we got to be better and we got to be more consistent. And again, just based on what our guys did today, you know, carry that over tomorrow. I don't know what that means as far as carrying over into the game on Wednesday, but we need to be more consistent overall as a team. When you talk about the response from, you know, the, the really high high and then going into the next game and, and not coming out how you should, is that more so in practice is it to start the next game or how does that how does that response vary I guess it really it's, it starts in practice mm -hmm. and that that was what I was so impressed with after Wisconsin was the prep leading into the Purdue game and you know our guys I told them we, we won that Purdue game in the film room uh, the day after Wisconsin and then we followed that with a great practice and then and we followed that up with another really good day and a sharp shoot around and, uh, you know, again, I, I just I thought we, we were tired in our preparation going into the Iowa game. And, and if you're not mentally prepared to play Iowa, the way they move, the way they get the ball up the floor, uh, it's, you're going to have some really ugly moments. And that's what happened. Now, we, again, we had some stretches where we were pretty darn good yeah. to erase the deficit, the 15-point hole that we dug ourselves in the first six minutes of that game. And to take a lead, we did some pretty good things in that stretch. But then when things started spiraling the wrong way, it got really ugly. And we just didn't handle uh, that run very well. Purdue, we were as consistent as we've been since I've been here. And, you know, you could argue that was as good a win as any in the history of the program. And then you follow it up like that. And the other thing is, when you have a win like that, people start talking about things. And, you know, if, if you believe it, buy into it, you know, that can take your focus away. And on the other end, you know, you beat a team like Purdue, okay, we're going to be in the Final Four, and then you lose to Iowa, well, we're never going to win another game again. And those are the highs and lows and, you know, the things that you deal with, especially in the social media era that we're living in, and you just got to be more consistent with it. And, you know, I challenge our guys, don't look at that crap. You know, I mean, people are going to say a lot of really bad things about you when you lose, and they're going to say a lot of unbelievably uh, great things about you when you win. And, again, that, that – will cause you to ride that roller coaster in that wave of emotion. So, you know, it's an important thing to block out the outside noise. You have to do it if you're going to be successful and if you're going to have consistency in this game. So at Iowa, you, you talked about the good stretches and uh, digging yourself out of the 15-0 the hole. What went into that? What, what good things were happening to allow you guys to get out of that hole? Well, we, find, we, we started playing smart. And, you know, we tried to beat Iowa at their own game, and you're not going to do that in that building. You know, we came down and we took a couple rushed, uh, deep threes, and we talked about moving and getting the defense shifted side to side. If you do that, you're going to get a really good look. And once we started doing that, we were unbelievably efficient. And, you know, when you looked at what uh, we did against their man-to-man -man defense, once we got the ball shifted side to side and when the ball hit the paint, uh, we had unbelievable efficiency. When we came down early in that game and we fired up threes and we had a switch on one of their bigs and we just chucked up a 25 footer rink had a smaller guy just right on his back with a foot in the paint 
and we raise up and take a contested three. So all those things early in that game led to the hole that we dug for ourselves. And once we started playing smart and getting the ball uh, shifted and, and taking advantage of the mismatch, uh, we became a very efficient team. Why did the zone give you guys fits there at the end of the, in the second half? Well, part of it was, you know, we missed some shots. We, we had some looks that guys have been making. I mean, we go 14 to 23 against Purdue. I think uh, six of our last seven or seven of our last eight, we'd made double digit threes. So we had been shooting the ball at a very high clip. And, you know, we missed some of those shots. And you, you're forced to take different shots in the zone. But the biggest thing was we had the ball opportunity to get the ball into the middle, into the teeth of the defense where you can get a high low, where you can get a spray out three. Once we started getting the ball into the middle, uh, we started scoring. But it took us a while to do that, and we had opportunities. And again, we watched every one of those clips on uh, against their zone today because we're going to see more of that uh, here moving forward with some of the teams that we're playing. Uh, but once we got the ball into the middle, uh, you know, we kind of got what we wanted, but it took us too long to get there. Well, one of the bright spots was Eli Rice and the spark he was able to provide you guys, especially there in that run in the first half. What did you like about uh, what he brought to the, to the game against Iowa? Yeah, he did. He, he I think, had nine of our first uh, 16, and included in that run, he missed a dunk, you know. And, and we watched that today. you got to make that. You know, that's a play. It was a four-point swing because they got a dunk on the other end uh, after that missed dunk but you know he he did he had a couple really nice drives of the basket he had a, he had a three for us uh he had one possession where again josiah had two feet in the paint he had uh cricky switched off on him who we had just beaten off the dribble and he took a, a double jab uh contested three so those are things that you know he'll get better at here moving forward and recognize uh, those situations uh but i did like the spark that he gave us now he had a couple defensive mistakes like everybody on our team uh, and again, we watched those in the film room today, but you know, that's part of the learning curve that you have as a freshman in the growth process. But you know, Eli's a lot better player, and I'm really proud of him for the work that he's putting in. And uh, it was good to see him get it going offensively because he is a very talented player. What about his just uh, readiness? Because he didn't play right against Purdue or didn't, didn't play many minutes. And then to come in when his number was called and be ready for that opportunity. Yeah, it, it's what you, you preach to these guys about all the time is you, you just, whenever your name is called, you got to be ready to go out there and produce. And I think Eli had played every game leading into the Purdue game. And just on the flow with how well we were playing, he didn't get an opportunity to put him in. Uh, but, you know, with foul trouble, with, with Juwan picking up two, uh, with one of our other guys getting to uh, Sam was sick. He couldn't play very many consecutive minutes. So, you know, that gave Eli an opportunity. And he went in and took, took uh, complete advantage of it. And, again, those are, those are what you talk to the guys about. It's what you preach and, and hope they buy in. And, and Eli gave us a good spark. All right, going to work in our first break here on our Nebraska Men's Basketball Show. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. We're back with more with Coach Hoiberg coming up right after this. I'm Tom Osborne, former football coach and founder of the Teammates Mentoring Program. I'm recruiting for the team, and I want it to be the finest team in America. I'm looking for someone like you to be a teammates mentor, someone who is willing to reach out to a child and make a difference. Meeting with a student once a week at school can make an impact in their life and in the community. We want you to join our team. Go to teammates.org to apply today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. 
more powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Let's create yours with a built Ford Tough truck. Ford F-150 with impressive max towing capability and available pro trailer backup assist. So navigating tight spaces is as easy as turning a knob. Plus, with available pro power on board, you have power on demand. Be future ready with Ford F-150. Now get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. It's time for another round of Nebraska Farm Facts. If there's one thing Nebraska's known for, it's our beef. And Nebraska soybeans feed a lot of them, and even more pigs and chickens. Farmers and ranchers raise livestock and poultry to provide nutritious, affordable protein for all ages to help build muscle and maintain energy for a healthy lifestyle. Keep that in mind as you prepare all that tasty meat on your tailgate grill. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to our Husker men's basketball show with head coach Fred Hoiberg. I'm Jessica Hootie, Greg Sharp, out for the week, so I'm filling in for him tonight. But, uh, Coach, I did want to go back and talk a little bit about the Purdue win. Uh, we, we've mentioned it a few times, but uh, how much fun was that to get to celebrate the, this court storming and just um, such a huge win, but to get to celebrate that with the, the fans and also your team? Well, for, first of all, that, that was not an easy night to get around. So <laughs> the fact that we had, you know, pretty much a full building yeah. on a night where, uh, you know, shoot, it was hard getting to the arena 10 minutes away from where I live. So, you know, the people that came from all over uh, were very grateful that they came. And uh, I think they're pretty happy that they decided to come to that one as well. Because I know a lot of people that decided to watch that one from home, a late mid-game, uh, mid-week game uh, with not very good weather. And to be able to celebrate that win, first of all, with the fans on the court. I, when I went in there and got water dumped on my head, uh, the whole team, went, I didn't even realize this, but there was three guys that were still out taking pictures <laughs> with the fans on the court, including my kid. 
And uh, it was, you know, it was just it was a really fun moment. It was a great way to cap off a very tough stretch of games. And, you know, we needed it. We needed a signature win like that. Uh, it's going to be very important to have a win like that in our resume uh, when it comes to March. And, uh, you know, we just, again, we got to get more consistent now the rest of the way, starting with this game on Wednesday. But, you know, from just a standpoint of being able to celebrate that, you know, there was still, I went out and did my radio show, there was still a lot of fans in the building. And, you know, it's just, it was so much fun. I mean, Coach Rule st storms the court. Yeah, <laughs> Trev, and Trev, and Trev, yeah. Trev storms the court. Uh, it, was, it was really special. And, you know, it's fun to celebrate those types of wins. Our fans deserve it. And, you know, to be able to go out there and play a, as complete a game from start to finish on both ends of the floor, it, it's what it's all about. And, you know, again, we got to get back to that. I, you know, I, I don't sleep real well, Jessica. And, you know, I'm laying in bed last night. Normally I can fall asleep okay, but, you know, I get up for various reasons at 2 or 3 in the morning, and then I can't <laughs> fall back asleep. Last night was one of those nights I was just thinking, you know, what am I message I'm going to give to the team, you know, the film uh, session, you know, how we were going to approach uh, the guys in practice with an early morning uh, this morning. And I'm just laying around thinking. So I go into the other room and, you know, I'll lay down, turn the TV on. And, you know, it said, I think it said Magnum PI or something like that. But it wasn't I think <laughs> because one of the playoff games went late and the coaches show was on, mm -hmm. which I never watch. But they reviewed the Indiana and the Purdue game. And I watched those highlights and, you know, sh shoot, it got me excited, uh, you know, for w certainly what we're capable of doing. And that's why I said to the team, we're capable, but are we willing? And, you know, we've got to do this for 40 minutes every game, and we've got to be more consistent in our approach and, and with our preparation. And, again, to their credit, they stepped up in a big way today. And, you know, that's what people don't see is the behind the scenes and all the work that goes into, you know, the messages that you try to relay to your team to make them – as consistent as possible. It's a great group of kids. You know, there's not one bad apple on this team. And, you know, the, the guys came in and, uh, and they worked through it. And again, hopefully that carries over to the game on Wednesday night. By the way, you mentioned getting out there for your radio show. Did Kent show up for your interview? Because apparently he missed a couple post-game segments because he was out there celebrating, taking <laughs> selfies with uh, fans and stuff. Jake said he did have to lose the watch about midway through the first half. Yeah, with, with the emergency alerts yes, that yeah. had come up. Kent was foaming at the mouth when, uh, <laughs> when I went there. It was, listen, it's great for him. I'm happy yeah. for Kent. I mean, he put so much into these games and his emotion. I did the pregame, the Indiana game, which was a huge game for us with the stretch that we had coming up with, with I think, three or four in the road. And the one home game we had in that stretch was Purdue. And, uh, you know, Kent was so charged up before that Indiana game. And we're doing the pregame. And normally that's about a five to six minute segment. I think we went about 12 minutes on the pregame. He just kept talking and talking. But he, he is so invested in this thing. And, you know, I, I want to do something for him. I mean, to do something special just because of how big of a fan and, you know, how, how big of an ambassador he is for our program and just the passion. I love going back and listening to his calls. And he, he just puts so much work into it in his prep. And, you know, it, he deserves it. He deserves a win like that. So I'm happy for, uh, for everybody involved in the program. I'm happy for the fans. And we need to give him more moments like that. You would uh, you know, talked about kind of figuring out how to win. How much is that just a process of getting a team where you win and you win consistently, where you do have big wins and then you follow that up with a big win? How much is that just a process of getting guys to understand what goes into that? Yeah, I mean, it, it is. And it's, you know, let's be honest, Jessica, it's hard to win on the road in this league. Yeah. And I think I saw a stat the other day before Illinois was knocked off by Maryland. I think the home team had won, were 17-0 and 0 on, you know, the top eight teams in the league. So it's hard to go win on the road in this league. Now, you're going to have to at some point. We've had some good road wins the last couple of years. You know, I think two years ago at the end of the year, we knock off Penn State, Wisconsin, and Ohio State in three, uh, three games in a row to finish that season. And then last year, we had a couple of really good road wins as well. And we're going to have to get a few of those uh, to finish out our season if we want to be playing in March. You know, and, and how tough PBA is now. You've mentioned that now a couple years, just that it's one of the best when it's rocking. It's one of the best, no doubt, in the country. But now you're seeing, you know, recruits come in from other sports and mention that, that, hey, the atmosphere when they went to a men's basketball game. How proud does that make you? I mean, I know you guys take your recruits to football games, but now that these other sports can utilize what the atmosphere that you're providing to show, hey, this is what you could get here in Lincoln. Well, the one thing I did say to the game ops is let's maybe not put Dylan Riola on the big screen when we're <laughs> shooting free throws. <laughs> Maybe we do that when the other team 
is shooting free throws. It got pretty loud in there when that happened. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it's kind of cool when, when Coach Rule comes and talks to your team and mentions that. You know, when they have one is family when they came to town and they see the passion and the energy of the fan base and how supportive they are, you know, how that helped his family adjust. And then, you know, he talks about the importance of bringing uh, recruits on campus and they see the atmosphere and how hard uh, our guys are out there competing. I think I saw something, you know, from last February 1st, we had the best winning percentage of any team in the Big Ten. So we've had a good little run, uh, you know, throughout this and PBA has been a huge part of helping us have that success. It's absolutely been rocking in there. So when we get uh, recruits, and it's the same for us, when we have recruits in town to take them to Memorial Stadium, to take them to a volleyball game, uh, you know, to show them uh, how well they will be supported as a student athlete here in Nebraska, it's pretty cool. You know, a lot was made and a lot of graphics were put out there. A lot of people were, were talking about this, but, you know, comparing you and your grandpa, Jerry Bush, and, and the wins over number one teams, when you see that and you see your name next to his and, and that that feat, the only two coaches to beat a number one team, what does that mean to you? Yeah, that, that's, that's really, it's really cool. It's emotional, to be honest with you. And, you know, I didn't know my grandfather very well. He passed away when I was three years old. And, you know, the one thing I remember about him, he used to do a magic trick where he'd stick a quarter uh, in one ear and take it out the other. And, you know, but to talk to his former players, I got a great email from one of his former players that said, you know, I've witnessed now the two greatest wins in Nebraska history, one I was a part of in 1958 against uh, Kansas State. And, you know, then uh, to be at your game, <clears throat> you know, to see a knockoff Purdue, that's, that's pretty special. And, you know, my parents, uh, they come here and basically stay in Lincoln uh, throughout the entire basketball season. And, you know, for them to be here and watch Sam be a big part of that win uh, the other day is, is, is pretty special for our family. But, yeah, when, when you see that from uh, my grandfather and you get uh, messages and emails from people that were at both games, um, you know, that's pretty darn cool. And that was a great week. I mean, not only did they beat – Kansas State, who was number one, but the week before they beat Kansas and Wilt Chamberlain, who I think it was number three, three or four uh, is, is what they were. And uh, yeah, so to have two of the four wins in, in our family is pretty neat. Very special. All right, let's work in another break here on our Nebraska men's basketball show. Contact 811 two days before you dig to protect your underground utilities and yourself. It's free, it's easy, it's the law. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Let's create yours with a built Ford Tough truck. Ford F-150 with impressive max towing capability and available pro trailer backup assist. So navigating tight spaces is as easy as turning a knob. Plus, with available pro power on board, you have power on demand. Be future ready with Ford F-150. Now get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. We've got some universally big news for Nebraska Pick 5 fans. The price for matching four of five numbers has risen from $450 to $500. Visit your favorite Nebraska lottery retailer today. Pick five numbers between 1 and 40 or ask for a Nebraska Pick 5 quick pick. Match four numbers and you could win 500 bucks. Each play only costs $1 and there are drawings seven days a week. It's just another way our game is getting better all the time. Nebraska Pick 5 top prize odds 1 in 658000 Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. 
inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Notto Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Start your next journey with Woodhouse. Our commitment extends beyond just selling cars. We offer an unparalleled car buying experience that allows you to shop and buy all online. Explore an array of new brands, makes, and models, as well as our large selection of pre-owned vehicles. And it's easy to get started today with our streamlined purchasing process online, granting you the freedom to secure your next vehicle anytime, anywhere. Discover a better way to buy with Woodhouse. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Kidwell is celebrating 75 years of business, and they know how many network issues you and your team have to resolve. Let them help. Kidwell and Juniper leverage Mist AI to provide more visibility, flexibility, and scalability into your network to quickly get rid of those trouble tickets. Heighten the user experience and deliver reliable wireless access to customers and employees to simplify operations for network administrators. Kidwell, see beyond. Inspiring connectivity and communication since 1948. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Final segment with Coach Hoiberg as we've got a special interview with Sam Hoiberg coming up in our final segment of our Nebraska men's basketball show. Well, Coach, we were talking before we hit the air. How crazy was men's college basketball last week? Yeah, it, it was kind of a fun day for me. First of all, my alma mater, Iowa State, knocks off when I was able, <clears throat> excuse me, to watch the first half in the in the coach's room before our game, and you know, a great win for TJ, who who worked for me at Iowa State. Just really happy for the success that he's having right now with the Iowa State program, and you know, then we go out and knock off number one. So that was kind of cool, uh, you know, for TJ and my alma mater, knock off number two, and then you know, we get number one and then you know just the craziness then TCU where my son Sam's twin brother Charlie goes they knock off Houston in the next game and I think Oklahoma oh yeah well no but then they beat uh, Houston yeah in they the did next yeah one. they so, beat two, they two, yeah, two top, top ten, ten wins. two top yeah. ten wins and I think was it eight of ten or nine of ten of the top teams ended up getting beat last yes, week so yeah. you know but that's what this year is going to be about I mean I think Purdue is the best team um, you know after that uh, you know, I think anything can happen on any given day, and it's going to be a fun tournament. All right, so looking ahead for you guys um, at Rutgers, that's not an easy travel destination for you guys. Um, what goes into to picking up a win there and just kind of managing all the things that go into traveling to Rutgers? Yeah, it, it is a long travel day, and we're going to go early. We'll start at 8 in the morning tomorrow and try to get out of here about 12.30, which will put us in, I think, to Newark at about 4, which is not a great time to get into Newark with the traffic. <laughs> Uh, New York uh, uh, City traffic, so you know it's it's going to be a long day. I think we'll get to the hotel 4:30 or 5 and have a film session and a meal and be able to get a good shoot around that next morning. And uh, you know the the difficulty. Hopefully we'll be able to get out of there. I think they've got some snow coming in tomorrow. Um, hopefully that doesn't complicate things. Uh, but we're going to get back really late, and then we've got another short turnaround like we talked about earlier for that 115 game, and that's going to be a fun game, Coach Knee is coming in and, and uh, you know that 93-94 team will be recognized the Big 8 championship team uh, you know had some 
uh, fun games against those guys. I think they beat us both times that year at Iowa State. But, you know, just it's going to be a really fun weekend. I think we're expecting about 200 former players uh, to be there uh, for that game. So that's going to be pretty cool. But we're going to have to get that mindset shifted very quickly with, the, with very uh, long, difficult travel. Uh, but we'll get home at probably, uh, you know, 2, 2.30 in the morning. Uh, after that game. So we're going to have to figure out a way to get our guys rest, but at the same time put in a game plan for a very, very good uh, Northwestern team at home. All right, so what, what are going to be kind of the keys? What should we be watching for in the matchup against Rutgers? Yeah, we have to take care of the ball. They are really good. They're a top 10 defensive team. They, they really uh, heat you up. Uh, they'll throw different presses uh, out there at you. Um, they'll get out into the passing lanes and deny. So we have to handle their pressure well. Uh, we have to force them into the half court. We can't give them anything in transition, which is fueled by uh, their defense. That's what really gets them out in transition. And then rebounding is going to be a big key as well. Cliff is, is one of the best. Uh, Amori is one of the best offensive rebounders in the country. And they've got size uh, all across the board. It's going to be a very physical game, and we absolutely have to match that, especially early. All right, and then you, you hit on it a little bit, but uh, lots going on inside PBA on Saturday uh, with Northwestern coming to town. Not sure if you saw, but uh, Nebraska football put out a tweet. There's going to be a dunk contest before oh. the game as well. Do you have any um, favorites leading into the dunk contest? Uh, football? Yeah, dunk football. Contest? Uh, Nash. He's got, he's got to be, <laughs> he did, can do did, everything, right? Did he lose just 40 pounds? He just lost 40 pounds yeah. by cutting his egg <laughs> consumption in the morning and a half. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm going to go with Nash, uh, you know, leading the charge. I can see the polar bear getting a 360. Um, is Riola in town yet? Can we, is he going to be there I yet? don't know. I, I think probably we saw Heiner Carberg threw okay. it down pretty good last year. Maybe one of the tight ends. Um, I don't know, Fedoni, how he oh, yeah. is. But, yeah, we might see some, some pretty, pretty good dunks. But, you know, you just mentioned it. Just how special is it to be able to do that? How important is that to be able to have an alumni game, to welcome those guys back and, and have them interact with your guys? Yeah, it's, it's great. I, I've heard from a lot of them this year. They, they've really enjoyed watching this team. You know, they see a toughness factor uh, with this group. They see an unselfish team. Um, you know, the ball's really moved. I think we're 23rd right now in offensive efficiency. So we've really taken a step in the right direction on that end of the floor and you know just to uh, get those guys back in here it, it's important it's important to uh, you know have your alumni uh, you know feel like they're part of the program and again we're going to be recognizing a really special group and, and a great person a Danny Knee he you know I talked about this when he was on the show when when he talked for pretty much the entire <laughs> uh, half hour segment but you know he uh, he came into my home and did a home visit and you know with my past and the history with with the University of Nebraska with my parents both going to school here uh, with my grandfather being a coach with my uh, other grandfather being a, a sociology professor for over 30 years uh, you know we have a lot of background here so you know it was attractive when Danny Knee came into my house because they had great teams back then they played an exciting style of basketball they got the ball up and down the floor and really played in transition so uh, you know, it'd be great to catch up with Coach. I, I think I'm going to uh, get together with him uh, after the game and, you know, hopefully tell some stories, hopefully after a win. And uh, it's going to be a fun, certainly a fun weekend for us. That was fantastic radio. I think it, it we was, should submit it for, like, some kind of a radio award. I tried, to, I tried to chime in a little bit, but then <laughs> he, I just said, you know what, I'm just going to let him go. And, yeah, he, he was phenomenal. That's how he was on the visit. He just mm -hmm. came in and, you know, was, was very engaging and, uh, you know, gave a great visit. I, I absolutely considered uh, Nebraska. One, you know, Coach Osborne offered me a scholarship for football, which was pretty darn cool, being a huge diehard Husker football fan. Uh, but, you know, Coach Nee was, uh, he, he really was a good recruiter. You can tell and see going through that process why he had so many uh, good players here. You know, I, I had a chance to sit down with a few of your guys today um, for some features that are upcoming, but it's just such a great group. And I know you said that before, but, I mean, how enjoyable does it make it? It can be so stressful, but how, how much easier, I guess, does it become in, in your role when you have a group of guys like this? It, it, it makes our job so much easier when you have a group of guys that come to work every day. And, uh, you know, especially when you're going through tough times, when they come in and they respond. And, you know, it's, it's really what this business is all about, is getting your guys ready to go after tough performances. And, again, we need to do a better job of coming back after emotional wins. But, you know, when they come in and, and work like they do, uh, they get along, uh, there's no... Um, uh, you know, they don't bounce back. There's no fight uh, when we're trying to get things across to them. It's just a really fun group to be around. And it started last year. You know, I give Greasel and 
and to Mel Derrick a lot of credit for really flipping, you know, the narrative of Nebraska basketball and getting our culture where it needed to be. And then our, you know, we met as a coaching staff in the off season. How can we get more guys like that in a program? And we identified players that we felt uh, could carry that on. And I think we, we did a pretty good job of getting guys in here. Uh, they're going to lay it on the line. And, you know, when I look at, just go back to that Purdue game for a second, you know, Jawan Gary on the second or third possession, the first opportunity there's a loose ball, he dove in, in between three Purdue players and, you know, got the ball and called a timeout. And that set the tone for the game. Uh, Jamarcus did it against Michigan State. He went in there and just cracked their big guy on a rebound opportunity. So, you know, those are the things that you need out of your team. When early in the contest, they're setting the tone and getting the momentum going on your side. Now, we didn't do that in Iowa City. The first shot goes up, and uh, their big kid goes up and gets an offensive rebound. Second shot goes up. We have a chance for two guys to nail a guy, and we don't, and uh, they get an offensive rebound on the first two possessions. And that set the tone, and that's why we dug ourselves a big hole. I'm such a firm believer early in games, if you go out there and make the right play and make a hustle play, uh, that you're going to set the tone and, and, and pretty much have it go your way the rest of the way. Pretty special to have Derek Walker there for that win against Purdue. Yeah, it, it was great. He, you know, he was he felt like he was here for 12 years, <laughs> and he came into the locker room before that game. It was great to catch up with him. Uh, you know, we're going to fight and try to get him, uh, you know, working again here real soon. He needs to be in a in a place where you know they utilize his strengths, which is playmaking, uh, handling the ball. He, he led us in assists. Not many five men lead your team in assists, and he needs to be in a situation uh, with an organization that's going to allow him uh, to play to his strengths, and that's what we're going to try to do, helping him with his agent uh, to get him in a good spot. We had a chance to sit down with him last week. He's a pretty cool guy and thinks the world of you and is so appreciative of his time as a Husker, so um, I know he means a lot to this program as well. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Coach, appreciate your time. Best of luck this week. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. All right, we're going to step aside for a break. And a final segment coming up, we're going to hear from Sam Hoiberg. Great conversation there, so stick around. Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Hey mom, yeah, I got in a crash. I'm okay, I was wearing my seatbelt. People count on you to buckle up. Brought to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment in only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line, text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. There's no community like a Cenex community, and that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there locally at Cenex. Woodhouse has got you covered for your next car, truck, or SUV. We are committed to making the car buying and owning experience better thanks to our knowledgeable sales staff and factory certified technicians. You can discover our large inventory of new and pre-owned vehicles anytime at Woodhouse.com, where we have made buying a car easier than ever. Whether you need a family hauling SUV, a car to take you around town, or a hardworking truck, Woodhouse has something for everyone. 
Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. Our final segment here of our Nebraska men's basketball show. Sam Hoiberg, you think about this this time a year ago, about almost exactly a year ago, Coach Hoiberg and Sam tell the story about they're on the plane ride and Emmanuel Bandemel goes down and uh, he's called up there and said, hey, we're, we're going to need you to play a bigger role. And uh, certainly he embraced the opportunity that he had a year ago. And now he's making night in and night out game winning plays for this team. We go back to the Purdue win. He had some huge steals. He actually leads the team in steals and knocks down some big buckets to so many game winning plays for this team. And uh, earlier today, I got a chance to sit down with Sam. All right, Sam, well, think about this time a year ago, how your role was about to change drastically. Describe the last year of your basketball life. Yeah, I mean, it's basically been everything I've dreamed of. I mean, when I first came to Nebraska, I didn't really know what my role would end up being, and I was just planning on developing to become as good as possible, and then if I had to transfer to go play at a smaller level, I was going to be willing to do that. But, uh, yeah, I think this time I was still on scout team last year, and then probably a week later from now, play my first game and no I'm just trying to do everything I can to help us win it's been really fun to have a lot of success while being able to play where do you feel like your game has grown the most I mean I've just been so much better at dealing with pressure and like handling playing against really good competition I mean I've worked on my jump shot a lot since I got to college that was one of the main things I wanted to get better at and I'm still working to get that up to hopefully a level like CJ and KSA, not quite there yet. But uh, yeah, shooting a lot and then defensively is something I've been really proud of myself. Yeah, and, and Coach Linzer talked about you're one of the defensive captains, that he, he relies on you a lot to, for what they, you guys want to do on the defensive end. Why do you have such pride in, in yourself and what you provide for a team on the defensive end? I mean, it's one of those things that you can really control. Like shooting, you can't control if the ball's going to fall in the hoop, it's in and outs. And, can't always control what the other team will do defensively, but when you're on defense, you can be in the right spots. You always have control over that. You can talk other people into the right spots, and I think I've just really taken pride in doing the things that I can control to the best of my ability, and then I just love playing my heart out, kind of being that role model for people that want to play hard, and yeah, I just take a ton of pride in that and doing the, the little things that help us win. You have such a knack for getting your hands on basketballs, getting the steal at the biggest moment. How does that evolve in a, in a game? Is it just something, you know, you see it and it's natural, or is it something you worked at? Like, where, how does that become such an important, critical part of what you do? I mean, I've always been pretty good at reading the passing lanes, and I feel like as the games go on, I kind of learn the tendencies of teams and try to pick my spots and when to go for steals. And I don't want to do it too often to become a gambler to where I'm not going to get the ball and then mess up our defense. But I know there's times where I can take advantage of teams throwing the same pass over and over. And I try to take advantage when I can. And uh, I've been pretty successful with that lately. And it's just something I'm always kind of looking for to get easy points for us. I talked with Derek Walker last week, and he joked about how, you know, in the year before you you took on a bigger role that they would always tell you, hey, even on, on walkthrough days, hey, you got to calm down a little bit and how hard you always brought it every single day. Why was that important to you? Yeah, I mean, even when I wasn't playing, I wanted to do everything that I could to help our team win. And I think that's kind of carried through with how I practiced. Even when I wasn't playing, I was trying to challenge the guys. And I wasn't necessarily skilled enough at the time, but if I played hard and made them work for it, then they would get better, and I think that's kind of what my mentality was. I got to make these guys work hard when they're playing me, so they're ready for anything in the game. Your confidence, how confident are you right now? How much has that grown really over the last couple of years as well? Yeah, I mean, it's just crazy thinking about where I was when I first came here. I mean, I didn't know if I'd ever score point in practice, I didn't know what it would look like at all, and I mean, just how I've been able to really work hard, that's been giving me my confidence because I can trust my work. and It's just grown so much that I'm comfortable out on the court, and I'm still trying to improve on my confidence in my game, but uh, the more I play, the better it gets. What has it meant to you, the support, um, the how fans have gotten behind you outside of what your dad has done here in, at Lincoln or at Nebraska and in Lincoln, but that they, they believe and love you and want to cheer for you? Yeah, I mean, I always try to be that player that people are going to want to watch. I've been a fan for my dad's teams and I've seen what I don't like to watch and I've seen the guys that I love to watch. It's always the dudes playing hard. Um, and obviously I 
lack height, but I always said hard over height. I think I said that in like my first interview when I committed here. I said hard over height, and I kind of just try to play to that as a testament to all small guys in college basketball. Um, but yeah, I mean, the way they've rallied behind me, that's helped me grow in confidence, and I just really appreciate them that they appreciate my work. You know, the, this team has been so good about accepting whatever role it might be. And, you know, look at C.J. Wilcher coming off the bench, how he's contributed, your job, just everybody embracing their role. How, what's gone into that? How has that become such an important part of what this team, this culture is this season? Yeah, I mean, you look back to last year, and we really flipped the culture in terms of having to accept our roles and really just play to our strengths. And when you do that, you're going to be a lot more successful. And then I think you look back at Sam Griesel, Manuel Bandamel, and Derek Walker, they were all superstars in their roles, and they challenged us to do the same. And I think this year you can see that again, whether it's me diving on the floor, Joe doing the same, and then you got guys like CJ just being a flamethrower off the bench, and everyone else doing exactly what they need to do to help us win. How much fun has it been for you to be a part of just the growth over the last couple of years to see where you were in, on Tuesday night? There's a court storming here inside PVA. Yeah, I mean, I think about that a lot, just what my mindset was here two years ago compared to now. It was a pretty depressing place my first year. We just were so down because we were losing all the time, and I never expected to be playing on a team that was getting the court storms in. I mean, that's not where we want to be. We want to be a team that's getting court stormed if we lost, but we're slowly getting better, and we want to keep improving upon that. I love that. Last thing I got for you, just, you know, for a young kid that might be listening, what, what advice would you give to someone that maybe your time doesn't come right away, but just that eventually it will, I guess, what would be your words of advice to someone like that? Yeah, I mean, one thing that I thought about a lot was I wish I had worked harder in high school and in middle school when I was growing up playing basketball, because um, I didn't really need to at that time, and uh, that's kind of why I wasn't ready by the time I got to college. So if I had prepared myself better and worked a lot harder, I think I would have been maybe playing earlier, but once you get into that spot, if you're playing on the JV team as a junior, Josiah did that, and he worked super hard, and he started on varsity as a senior, and then he had a D1 scholarship by the end of the year. So the main thing is just to work as hard as you possibly can and play as hard as you possibly can, do the little things that coaches love, and that's how you're going to get on the floor. In terms of getting better, you got to be in the gym every single day and be consistent, and that will help you grow in confidence and skill. Great stuff there from Sam Hoiberg. Love his perspective. I go back to that conversation we had with Derek Walker last week, and he said, you know, when Sam first came in and they could see his growth and, and that he could go play somewhere else, he's like, man, why don't you get out of here and go somewhere where you can play? But now I'm, he, and Derek said, but now I'm really glad that he, he didn't, that he stuck it out, and because now look at the role that he's played, but that, you know, even on scout team, when his role hadn't been where it is today, that they could see that, you know, he was a good player and, and could certainly make an impact. But uh, just a, a cool story of how he got in here, got better, and then now just waited for his time and then was ready for his opportunity. And certainly he's become a fan favorite. It's pretty uh, crazy how many times he comes up with a big steal or a big defensive play in, in the most important and critical moments of games that end up helping team this team win basketball games. So appreciate Sam Hoiberg's time. All right, so coming up for Nebraska men's basketball Wednesday night at Rutgers, 6 o'clock tip there uh, in Piscataway. And we will have the pregame show coming up for you at 5 o'clock with Kent and Jake. And then on Saturday, January 20th, 1-15 against Northwestern. But if you notice, Nebraska football put out a tweet today that said, come out and support Husker men's basketball and be a part of the pregame festivities with our second annual dunk contest this Saturday. So they posted a, a graphic of that. And so apparently there's going to be a dunk contest involving the football team in the pregame. So get on out there uh, like you guys have been doing for this Husker men's basketball team as they take on Northwestern on Saturday. All right, that will do it for hour number one. We've got a whole nother hour of Sports Nightly coming up. Keep it right here. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Let's create yours with a built Ford Tough truck. Ford F-150 with impressive max towing capability and available pro trailer backup assist. So navigating tight spaces is as easy as turning a knob. Plus, with available pro power on board, you have power on demand. Be future ready with Ford F-150. Now get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. 
For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers.
Good evening. I'm Henry Goodwin, and our sports sticker is brought to you by the 1890 Initiative. In Husker women's basketball news, Natalie Potts was named Big Ten Freshman of the Week for the fifth time. In Big Ten men's basketball, Iowa and Minnesota just wrapped up their game in Minneapolis. The Hawkeyes came out on top 86-77. to The Associated Press released their weekly top 25 men's basketball rankings. Big Ten teams in the top 25 include Purdue at 2, Wisconsin at 11, and Illinois at 14. NFL Wild Card Weekend wraps up tonight. The Bills just wrapped up their game against the Steelers. The Bills won 31-17, where they will go on to play the Chiefs in the Divisional. And then at 7-15, the Buccaneers host the Eagles, with the winner playing the Lions in the Divisional. Our sports sticker is sponsored by the 1890 Initiative. Do you want to support Husker student-athletes through name, image, and likeness? If so, visit 1890nebraska.com. Now, get ready for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly, right here on the Huskers Radio Network. Coming to you live from Memorial Stadium, it's Sports Nightly. All the Huskers, all the time. Sports Nightly is presented to you by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who remind you to buckle up and put the phone down. Here's Mast with the ball, coming to it, Tominaga. Gives on the hash mark, Hoiberg drives the ball, reverse layup with the left hand. Oh my goodness! Circus shot, absolutely! Circus shot by Sammy Hoiberg. She will reset with 12 on the shot clock. Wants the screen, gets it from Markowski. To the right elbow, back out top. Markowski will shoot a three. You betcha! Ties the game! A three-pointer by Markowski off the assist from Hayes. Mast hands it off to Hoiberg, coming right to left, faces up. Throws back to Tominaga, got a good look on the way. Got it! Got it! The net hangs up on the rim, it was so pure! Three ball, another CBA three. Casey gives Nebraska the lead. Goes off the bounce, goes behind your back, works foul line, pots for three, top of the key. You betcha, Natalie Potts, the Big Ten freshman of the week with a triple. On the right side to Hoiberg, right to left, top of the circle, reverses it off the throw. CJ, three is good. Got it. Bang, all right. CJ Wilcher is on fire. Here is your host, Jessica Cooty on the Huskers Radio Network. And welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. Hour number two of Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cootie. Greg Sharp is out this entire week. He's traveling to see his daughter in Hong Kong. So um, we uh, have given him some... Uh, much deserved time off and he'll get to go see his daughter so i'll be flying solo although i am getting some help in here um tomorrow night and friday night damon benning gonna step in and co-host sports nightly with me so you guys make sure and tune in for that and give us a call also cole do not let me forget to give him a hard time about his steelers losing today i will not they they were pretty much out of it from the get-go henry and i were kind of watching it while producing the show back here by the way, Henry and I also looked at the temp in Hong Kong just out of curiosity uh-huh. to see what kind of weather Greg's dealing with. It's like 68, sunny. Must be nice. Must be nice. That was one of the last things he said to us, like, hey, sorry I'm leaving you with the weather, but <laughs> deuces, basically. Yeah, the NFL, most of the games, other than the one last night uh, with Detroit, have not been very good. There's I guess the Steelers made it a little bit interesting, but, I mean, like you said, it kind of wasn't close most of the way. I don't think this. I I think the Eagles have have a hand up on the Bucks tonight. We'll see. We'll see. Anything can happen. I am. I gotta say. I mean, I'm a little bit torn here because uh, obviously there's Huskers on both teams, and but the the comeback story for Baker Mayfield um, certainly has been a fun story to follow and and throw into Trey Palmer there uh, for Tampa Bay. So I. I, I I don't know. I, it's hopefully it's just at least at least a good game because we've kind of seen some blowouts and um, didn't break my heart to see the Cowboys go down the way they did. Um, it's pretty it's pretty funny to see the dramatics unfold when when the, when Dallas loses the way that they did. I was shocked. I mean, like the I thought they were the team uh, to make a deep run this year, but nope. Nope. All right, well, um, we're going to do some weekend winners coming up here at the end of the show, so you guys be ready for that, all right? We will. We got them ready. All right. I did uh, want to spend a couple minutes talking about women's basketball. Tough loss yesterday at Minnesota. They trailed 
by 13 at the half, but then put together a 17-0 run to start the third quarter. And it looked like, I really thought, okay, they got this figured out. They are going to pull this one out. But then uh, Minnesota went on their own run. And tough way to end the third quarter. It was a pretty much kind of an eight-point swing, as, as Coatney called it, because, you know, Josh Shelley takes the quick three, and then they give up the five quick points within a matter of seconds at the end of the third quarter for Minnesota to end up taking the lead. But uh, I guess the good news there for that is that they do get a chance to play Minnesota again. So when you talk about, you know, avenging those types of losses, they do get that opportunity. They'll play Minnesota at home on Saturday, February 24th. So they'll uh, want to at least split that. But did want to give a huge shout-out to Callan Hake for how she came in there at the end and, and uh, gave this team eight points off the bench, hit two big threes, just ice in her veins to knock down those threes. They got within one with, what, 50 seconds left. But, you know, just um, didn't shoot it as well, Did, just didn't get off to a great start and then it got in too big of a hole. But, you know, this, uh, it's Amy Williams said, just some mistakes that they need to be able to learn from and, and build off of. They need to be able to, to clean up. But the fight was there and some of the things that they did there in that stretch, kind of what Coach Hoiberg was saying about the stretch, that they, the men's team had at Iowa, but being able to, to put some things together, but certainly um, need to bounce back from that one. They're now 12-5 and five overall and 4-2 and and in conference play. Got a big one coming up on Wednesday against Michigan and announced today it's going to be a red out. Huskers will wear their red uniform, 7 o'clock inside PBA. That's a big win. Again, looking to bounce back, get back in the win column and um, you know put another win in on the conference record and protect the home court is just so, so important because of how hard it is, both men's and women's, to go on the road and, and pick up wins. So they, they need a big bounce back win, but um, be there in your red and uh, be there for the red out on um, Wednesday night, seven o'clock inside PBA. And shout out to Natalie Potts. I mean, all she does is win Big Ten Freshman of the Week awards. She racked up another one, uh, the, her fifth so far. She leads the uh, all of the Big Ten freshman in both scoring and rebounding. It's going to be really hard, uh, I think, at this point. If the Huskers keep winning, it's going to be hard for anybody else to overtake her for Big Ten Freshman of the Year. But I think she'll keep playing well. She's been really impressive to see some of the ways that she really gets going in games, makes some some really game-winning plays and um, battles through, even if, you know, she might have a quiet first half. We talked to Amy Williams about that last coach's show, but she might have a quiet first half, and then here she comes storming back in the second half and pulls down, what, eight or nine um, rebounds and multiple offensive rebounds and gets gets the team going. So, um, but yeah, kudos to Natalie Potts and big one coming up on Wednesday for Nebraska women's basketball. In other Husker women's news, Huge, another huge addition for John Cook and company out of the transfer portal. They added a middle blocker, Layla Blackwell, out of San Diego, uh, San Diego State. Announced, she announced it on Saturday on her Instagram, and she said, so incredibly excited to announce that I will be spending my final season with Husker Volleyball this fall. Can't wait for this na next chapter to begin, GBR. And Huskers needed to add a, another middle blocker with Maggie Mendelson heading to Penn State. So now they got um, Layla Blackwell to go along with Andy Jackson and Becca Alec. But this is someone that has a ton of experience. This will be her COVID year. So she played at Indiana her freshman year, was a big part of the Indiana team, uh, led the team in uh, hitting percentage and blocks. But went to San Diego State and um, shattered all kinds of records. Her name is all over the record books. Helped them get to a Final Four in 2022. But uh, in 2022, in 2022, she led the Western West Coast Conference with 176 total blocks, which ranked fifth nationally, and she was sixth nationally in blocks per set. So uh, this is a big addition and another addition to be able to add to the rotation and, and the competition. And a cool story was written over the weekend that about she actually lived with Ani Stewart. And Ani Stewart was big in, in kind of telling her what to expect and some of the things, the good things that she can get out of playing at Nebraska. And so a uh, shout out Ani Stewart for uh, helping the Huskers land this one. But a uh, big addition there in Layla Blackwell, who 
middle blocker that will be joining Husker Volleyball. All right, we're going to work in our first break because we got a lot to get to here on our second hour of Sports Nightly. Coming up, we're going to hear from Quinn Clark, one of the newest additions to Husker football. I had a chance to sit, sit down with him at, on signing day, so we're going to bring you that interview. We're also going to hear from Josiah Alec. Uh, you want to talk about a, a great perspective. He's a deep thinker. Had some had an awesome interview with her, him here today. So we're going to hear from both of those interviews here coming up. So uh, stick around. We got that coming straight ahead. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you, too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Don't miss out on limited-time appliance deals during the closeout event at Lowe's. Get up to 35% off select major appliances. Plus, save an extra $100 when you spend $999 or more on all major appliances. Hurry, these deals are too good to last long. Shop in-store or online today. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid 1-4 through 124. Selection varies by location. While supplies last. See Lowe's.com for details. Hey Huskers, it's a new day in Nebraska. Manzer Equipment, Mertz Farm Equipment, and West Point Implement of Columbus have teamed up as True Ag and Turf. Coach Rule is bringing innovation and high performance standards to Husker football, and True Ag is doing the same to your farm with game changing Fent equipment. As Big Red establishes power on the field, True Ag and Turf does the same in the field by welcoming Fent to Nebraska. When you're clocking out and happy hour's already started. But... You're clocking out and happy hour's already started. The choice to enjoy is easy. Bud Light. Easy to drink, easy to enjoy. Pick up Bud Light at your local convenience store today. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Bud Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Let's create yours with a built Ford Tough truck. Ford F-150 with impressive max towing capability and available pro trailer backup assist. So navigating tight spaces is as easy as turning a knob. Plus, with available pro power on board, you have power on demand. Be future ready with Ford F-150. Now get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. From the first bell to final exams, they are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. Throughout the year, Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska and Nebraska Athletics will be honoring outstanding educators who help Nebraska's students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash teachers. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions. Lay your lay. Cow chip throwing. Lay. Or even classic car muscle. 
everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. Learn more at SenexHometownThrowdown.com. Senex, powered locally. Woodhouse Buick is bringing you more for the new year. With every new Buick purchase from Woodhouse, we're including three years of scheduled maintenance. Plus, with our current lease offers going on now, you'll save even more. Lease a 2023 Buick Envision Preferred for $399 a month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, $2,891 down payment and first payment and $299 dock fee due at signing. Must have GM lease loyalty or lease conquest to qualify. Offer expires January 31st, 2024. See dealer for details. If problem gambling is burning up your money, there is a way out. Help is free and confidential for Nebraskans and their families. There's no judgment, just help. Visit lifeafterbet.com. Welcome back to Sports Nightly. I'm Jessica Cootie. And earlier today, I had a chance to sit down with Josiah Alec, the senior for Nebraska men's basketball, transferred in, uh, but the Lincoln native. And you talk about a fantastic interview and just someone that's very thoughtful with his responses. But I had a chance to sit down with him today after practice. Okay, well, how has it felt? It's, it's obviously kind of midway through the season. How has it felt to wear that Nebraska uniform? Oh, I mean, I mean, it's really just been kind of a dream come true that I never really thought was possible. Um, you know, I wasn't very highly recruited out of high school, um, and I didn't go into my first school thinking that I was leaving. Um, and so when I entered the portal um, after my last stop in New Mexico and um, had had them hit me up, you know, I kind of, I'm a very diligent person. Um, and so I made sure that, you know, wherever I'm at for my last year, it's exactly what I'm looking for, just from a, like a culture, a staff, the players, play style, defense, all that. Um, and I just, I really saw the potential for, for what we could do here. Um, and so, I mean, to be able to have the, the success that we've had so far, um, is just kind of, it's a little, I mean, it's somewhat of like a little pat on the back to myself even. <laughs> Just because I'm like, okay, like I did make the right read. Like I did know that like, you know, I had a feeling that we could do big things. Um, and so to be able to have accomplished a, a good, you know, a, a definitely good milestone just for the team and the program already. Um, with obviously time to make more and to keep improving. Um, you know, it's, 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 been, it's been really rewarding. There's no questioning your passion for the game, your passion for wearing that uniform. Where does that come from, that just, you know, expressing your passion, not being afraid to express that passion? I mean, a lot of it just comes from a competitive spirit just within the household growing up. Um, you know, I, I, have five brother, I have five siblings, um, two brothers, three sisters, and we're all within eight years. And so <laughs> it's not like some, you know, big families where... You know, you got like a, a 15 or 20 year gap, you know, where, you know, there's like, it's kind of, you can't really pick on anybody because it's too big a difference. Like everybody was fair game in my house, especially for me being the middle child. Um, and so just growing up in a house of athletes and, you know, whether it was card games, board games, video games, you know, you want to win. You always want to show up your brother or your sister. Um, and then that just, that just carried over, you know, all my, all my best friends I ever made came from wanting to beat them <laughs> in one facet or another, you know, whether that be competing in the classroom or on the court or on the field. Um, competition has just really pushed me through my whole life and um, it just pushed me to be like the best person I can be. And so once I'm doing it, you know, part of the big attraction to coming here was, you know, this is the top of the top. Like this is, you know, arguably like the best or second best conference in the country. Um, so everything that I do out there, you know, it, it just means a little bit more knowing that it's against, you know, elite competition. Um, now, granted, I still used to get the same emotions playing at the YMCA. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, there's just so much that goes into just being here in the first place. And so every time anything happens on the floor, you know, it's almost just a little bit of 
just enlightenment and, you know, joy that you feel from, even though it may just be like one stop or, you know, one play or one dunk or one block or, you know, diving on the floor, or, you know, just seeing somebody else do it. It's just a culmination of all the time and investment we've put in and just seeing it pay off in that one instance and then just trying to stack those moments, obviously. Yeah, because I was going to ask you about that. That's one thing that people make note of all the time, the, your willingness to, you know, lay your body on the line. A lot of the things you do might not show up in the stat sheet, but um, and not a lot of players want to play that role. So why have you found your niche and maybe play in that role that a lot of people don't want to play? You know, like, I wish I could, I, I could say why, but, you know, I wasn't a very talented football player. Like, I had good hands, <laughs> um, but I wasn't overly, like, I wasn't, a dumb, I wasn't a very big kid growing up. You know, I was like tall, but I was a late bloomer, so I was just lanky. Um, and I wasn't very fast, but you know, I had no problem <laughs> putting my head down to get that extra yard if I had the ball. Um, and even I remember being in, in middle school, you know, I had, I'd even bought some knee pads because, you know, I used to dive on the floor so much. And I was like, man, I'm really starting to bruise my knees up, you know. <laughs> I didn't realize how bad of a fashion statement that was. So, I, I, you know, I went away from that <laughs> um, and just kind of embraced, you know, whatever beauty marks I get from it. But um, I've just, I've always kind of enjoyed doing the little things that other people seem to shy away from. Um, that's kind of where I find that I thrive. Uh, because, you know, every, you know, everybody wants to go out there and, you know, do the fun stuff with, you know, scoring or, you know, making, making the flashy plays. But I think there's, I mean, I, I just think there's a lot of, what would you call it? I don't know. I mean, glory to be shared in the sacrifice of it, you know. Like, you see the bench, you know, when someone makes that, like, that effort, extra effort play to start the game. You know, when Juan dove on the floor, at, like, to start the game versus Purdue, you know, if you could see the bench, like, everybody got up. Because, you know, it, it's, it kind of gets your team going in a way, just seeing somebody making that, that extra play, you know, doing something that it's, it doesn't feel good. <laughs> but that's part of why I like it. Because, you know, I know I'm willing to do it every time. And so if I can, anything I can do to give myself just, you know, a 1% greater chance of winning, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that every time. Because, you know, how much time and energy and money that has gone into just giving myself a chance to play this game, you know, I feel like go, coming out of the game with a couple, you know, bumps or bruises or scratches is, you know, that's the least of my worries. You know, I'm, try I'm trying to win the game. I'm trying to, you know, prove my people right, prove myself right that, you know, I can compete, I can win. And so, you know, as long as everybody else keeps hating it, I know I'm going to have a great chance to win. <laughs> I love it. Love it. Why do you feel like this team has been able to mesh together so well? I mean, with the guys that were coming from different places, the guys that were here, and just what you had just talked about, people willing to do whatever it takes. Why do you think, feel like this team has come together the way that, that you guys have? I think, it's, I think it's just a culmination of the coaches kind of over these past years, you know, every new person they've brought in just kind of fitting the mold of, like, what they're trying to do. Um, you know, it's a, it's a difficult process, especially with the transfer portal. You know, this is my fifth year in college, and so even in my first school, you know, I got a kind of experience, you know, transfers that came in and people that left, and then, you know, being a transfer twice myself, I kind of got to see a lot of different perspectives that most players don't. Um, and, you know, it's tough because obviously, you know, as a coach, you just, like, you want to go get the most talented players. But the hard part about that is that you can have an extremely talented team but if they're not willing to play the right way, you're never going to win when it counts. Just because it take, like it, it's tough because, you know, everybody on this team, everybody in college basketball, they put a ton of time into becoming the best version of themselves. Like nobody wants to be like everybody wants to be like the guy. Like it's no no one like is like oh okay yeah I, you know I've always dreamed of you know being like the fourth option. But at the end of the day, it's like at the, like you know you play to win. Like, regardless of, like, what numbers I, you know, if I go out and I have 20 and 12, but we lose, it's like, you know, it's, it's fraudulent. Like, congratulations, you got numbers. It doesn't mean anything. You just, like, your team, like, every, you know, even the worst team in the country is going to have a leading scorer, leading rebounder, leading whatever. But, you know, to be a part of a team that is already in a position to, you know, 
have a good resume for the postseason to you know, make March Madness. And you know, in our case, you know, potentially win the first tournament game in the school's history. Like to me, all that means way more than saying, oh, you know, or being able to say I averaged 12 points instead of eight. Like, you're basically just, you know, looking to get a pat on the back from somebody in a 30 second conversation 20 years from now versus with me, you know, knowing that I accomplished something like, you know, winning a ring or, you know, winning games in March Madness. Like that's, that's kind of what really sits with me. And like a lot of guys on this team, they're the same way. Like everybody, like, Every, like, even the people that haven't played in the game yet, like, all of them want to be on the floor. Everybody wishes, like, they could play more. But it's the still, like, it's the fact that we still have guys that show up, you know, they give their best look in practice. You know, they make those little extra, they make the extra passes. That's just a, it's a part of, you know, it's a, it's a credit to the coaches for bringing them here. And, I mean, I, I wish I could tell you exactly, like, how, but, I mean, I think at the end of the day it comes a lot to, just the way guys are raised, you know, the coaches they had growing up, um, just the standards that they were held to from their parents. And, um, you know, obviously, you know, we still have like a lot of time left in the season to kind of keep stacking quality wins and kind of be more consistent. But I've, I think there is a great possibility of that happening just because we don't have those splinters and wedges that a lot of teams have where you know, at this point in the season, a lot of guys are probably thinking, oh, man, you know, my averages are a bit low. Like, I'm not, I'm not getting the shots I need to. And then, you know, they might start getting a little bit more selfish. They start playing the right way. They start, you know, talking behind another person's back in the locker room. There's just a lot of things that come into, like, team management that has nothing to do <laughs> with, like, the game plan just because guys, you know, they have people in their circle telling them, oh, you know, like, hey, you know, you need to start, like, trying to figure out where you can find your shots. But on this team, you know, like, you know, the rising tide raises all boats, you know, however the saying goes. And it doesn't, I think, I think everybody is just very bought into what we have the opportunity to do here. And because of that, that's why we've, you know, had great wins so far. But at the end of the day, like, that level of success has been new to everybody. You know, this isn't a team, like, you know, it's, it's a credit to Purdue, like, He's built a program and a culture that is, like, wi like, winning has been the standard. It's what they've known and it's what they expect. And so, like, you'll see them, like, they just, they don't get rattled. That's why a win over them is so kind of critical is because they're not somebody that, like, loses their head. And so when you know when you beat Purdue, like, you're beating Purdue because they don't, they don't do all that fluke stuff. And so for us, I think we're all, I mean... We're all kind of new to this. And it's not an excuse to say, oh, you know, it's okay to go lose a bad game or, you know, whatever. And I'm not saying, like, you know, like Iowa, Minnesota, or Creighton, or any of those people are bad, bad teams. But we, we're still very volatile because we're still honing in on what exactly we can do and then what it takes to maintain that. And that's kind of, that's the process of, like, building a team, building a culture that's, that's really tough is letting guys know that, you know, if you, like, I believe that we're a top team. You know, I would love to have a number next to our name so that way, you know, maybe the fans can have a little bragging rights with their, friend, with their friends. But for me, like, I, I believe every team I'm on is, like, a championship contender. Like, I just, I just think that, you know, we'll always have an opportunity to win. And, you know, beating a team like Purdue kind of supports that. And so I'm just, I'm just hoping, you know, like, guys, we kind of, we felt the losses, we felt the wins, and then now we can kind of, bring things in and you know you know as coach says like you know after like every win you know not too high not too low mm -hmm. but you know just that kind of getting to that and so so uh that being said how special was it for you to get to be a part of that court storming and to give that to the fans here in lincoln you grew up here you've watched closely mm -hmm. this program to provide them with that moment where they could come celebrate with you guys how much fun oh, was that man. to be a part of that was that was amazing um, you know, I've always wanted to be a part of a court storm, <laughs> and I'm really happy I got to do it as a player, uh, especially on the winning team. And so, you know, I was down there. I was living it up. Um, you know, I, I tried to break away for, like, a second to go, like, you know, just uh, shake, uh, like, Coach Painter and, like, the team's hands. But then I got right back to it and was in there just moshing and pushing everybody. <laughs> and, you know, everybody was, I mean, the energy was ridiculous. Um, you would have thought we just, you know, won the national championship. But... Um, 
I mean, it, it was incredible. You know, I'm just I'm super happy for you know Coach Hoiberg having a win like that, um, especially just with the, like the historical significance of it, with like his like grandpa doing it like 40 years ago, um, and just you know I'm happy for our guys, I'm happy for our fans, um, but you know now it's like okay, like we know what we're capable of, and so you know now like you know even with our fans, you know now they're like okay, we beat Purdue like. Now we got to start playing like a team that, you know, can do that and wasn't just like a, oh, you know, we pulled that one out of our butt. But like, <laughs> you know, now we're, you know, we're still like average or whatever. It's like, no, like everybody's standards is raising now. But um, to pull off something historical like that, you know, that was, that was awesome, especially at home. And yeah, that was, it was incredible. Yeah, that was just, I uh, appreciate him spending some time with us here uh, this afternoon. Um, great stuff there. Great perspective. And it's just been Really neat to get to know this team, get to talk with them. I mean, you just heard Coach Hoiberg really bragging about um, and, and saying how much easier it makes it to want to be a part of it. It's a hard profession, but when you have a group like this, it just um, alleviates some of that pressure. It makes it enjoyable, even on the days when you're going through some adversity or a tough stretch. And so it's been a fun group. And you can just tell, you know, the experience that they have. And, and a guy like Josiah Alec, Rank Mast, and who have played a lot of basketball come in and, and want to do their part. And uh, it's, been, it's been special and not done yet. And certainly uh, they need to figure out to, to string some together and to win some on the road and uh, play like they play at home on the road and, and find a way to win some. But it's always tough in the Big Ten. But, again, appreciate Josiah Alec and his time with us here today. You could win a 2024 Porsche Macan from Porsche Omaha this season. Four lucky Husker fans will have a chance to win a 2024 Porsche Macan if they make a full court putt at halftime at one of four men's basketball games this season. For more information and the official rules, go to www.huskers.com. I did see somebody made it. I meant I, I'll find where it was, but I sent it to Jake Muehlheisen because it was funny. We were having that conversation when we had him on the show uh, about a week ago. I think it was leading into the Purdue game, maybe. And uh, he was saying how he had some strategy on how to make the putt. I did see somebody make it somewhere else. So it, it is, I think, doable. But uh, we want to see it done here in Lincoln. So register and uh, huskers.com slash putt. Let's get it done here inside PBA. All right, got to step aside for a break. Coming up next, we're going to hear from one of the newest Huskers, Quinn Clark here on Sports Nightly. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver. And at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of active liver. Active liver is one of many award-winning health products from New Nordic, the number one supplier of dietary supplements in Scandinavia. Purchase at Amazon.com or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Available as a tablet or delicious sugar-free gummy. Protect and help your liver the easy and effective way with active liver at Amazon or NewNordicUSA.com. Hey, Husker fans, it's Matt Davison with the 1890 Initiative. As we get ready to celebrate 1890's one-year anniversary, I'm proud to say the 1890 Initiative now represents 150 Husker student-athletes in nine sports. And with your help, we can keep 1890 going strong, helping student-athletes get the most from their name, image, and likeness, and preparing them for life after college. Visit 1890Nebraska.com to learn more about NIL and 1890 and contribute today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Noddle Companies is proud to support Husker Athletics. As a leader in commercial real estate, we create thriving communities. Discover what's new in the Builders District in North Downtown, Sunnyside Exarbon, and Row House Townhomes on Leavenworth. Noddle Companies is adding Omaha's first hybrid timber building to the skyline. Soon to follow is Builders Green Park, surrounded by mouth-watering food, exciting retail, and a hub of thriving businesses. Noddle Companies, building a better Nebraska. For more information, check us out on Facebook and Instagram. Go Huskers! Woodhouse Cadillac, where luxury meets performance. Discover the seamless blend of design, innovation, and power as you explore the 2024 Cadillac lineup. 
Lease a 2024 Cadillac XT5 Luxury for $599 a month for 39 months, 10,000 miles per year. With approved credit, must have current Cadillac financial lease and Costco membership prior to January 1st, 2024. $2,500 down plus first payment and $299 document fee due at signing. Offer expires February 29th, 2024. See dealer for details. At Groundworks, we take great pride in helping our Nebraska neighbors keep their homes healthy. From repairing foundations to waterproofing basements to fixing crawl spaces or lifting concrete driveways. We'd like to think our customers choose us because of our attention to detail or the fact that we're the nation's leading foundation solutions provider. What gives our customers the most comfort is we're right here in Nebraska. Visit Groundworks.com for a free estimate. Groundworks, foundation solutions crafted with pride the official foundation company of the Huskers. There's no community like a Cenex community. And that's why every Cenex store is so proud to serve theirs by supporting local athletic teams, promoting the arts, and making sure each store is a place its neighbors can find what they need, catch up with their friends, and stay connected. It's also why we give back, helping to make the wonderful places we call home the best they can be. Your local Cenex doesn't just work in your town, it lives there. The store next door, powered locally at Cenex. For farmers, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. And at Valley, we feel the same. Delivering game-changing technology and irrigation solutions that advance agricultural productivity with the results to prove it. From our leading irrigation technology to expert advice, you can always rely on Valley to bring out the best in your farm. At Valley, productivity isn't an option. It's everything. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Hi, this is Husker National Champion and Super Bowl champ Tony Veland. Throughout my football career, chiropractic care helped my athletic performance on the field and kept me in the game. Today, regular chiropractic care keeps me healthy and active to do the things I love. Chiropractic is safe and effective for all ages. Make chiropractic your first choice to reduce pain, improve your mobility, and feel better naturally. It works for me, and it can work for you too. Learn more at NebraskaChiropractic.org. Stay active with chiropractic. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, which is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres solutions for every field. So welcome you back to Sports Nightly. Wanted to bring you one of my conversations with one of the newest Huskers that will be joining Nebraska football. He's one of the legacies, one of the many legacies that this football staff brought in on, during, uh, as a part of this signing class in the 2024 signing class. Quinn Clark was the number one player in the state of Montana. He was all state as a wide receiver, a safety, and a punter. He did it all for his high school there. But he was one of those guys that came to camp and earned a, a kind of an offer from this coaching staff and was grew up a fan of this place. His dad, Ken Clark, was a member uh, of the Nebraska football team, was a running back from 1985 to 1989. And uh, when I was going back and we were was talking to Cole about which one we wanted to run tonight, this is by far one of my favorite conversations that I was able to have. So here is my conversation with Quinn Clark. We now welcome in Quinn Clark, the wide receiver out of Bozeman, Montana, Husker legacy and the number one recruit in the state of Montana. Quinn, thanks for joining us. Congratulations. How does it feel signing day finally here? You can officially make it official to be a Husker. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh, it feels great just to know that, you know, I'm locked in and I'm, I'm going to be spending the next four to five years with, you know, the recruits and the guys that are currently on the team and with that great coaching staff we got. So you committed back in June, came to camp here, right? Take me through the, the process and uh, how you landed on feeling like this was going to be the, the home spot for you. Um, so, yeah, camp, camp. I got offered at camp. And, you know, right after that, I really wanted to go on an official and, you know, see, see what they have to offer. So we got that scheduled. I went end of June to that official, and I loved it. So I committed. Um, and, you know, it's been, it's been great ever since. I've just been building relationships with the coaches, relationships with the crews, the, uh, the players. So it's been great. So you got some ties to Nebraska, obviously. Your dad was a, a heck of a player here, running back, Ken Clark, and from 86 to 89. Your, I guess your entire family came here. What, what did, have you been told about Nebraska your entire life? Uh, I've liked them since day one, I think. There's a really old picture of me probably in, like, first grade with wearing a Nebraska Cornhusker jersey or, like, a football player outfit um, for Halloween. 
So I've liked them. Uh, it's kind of built, uh, I've been raised to like them. And, um, you know, I've loved the school since I was young. So it, it feels great to be going to the place that uh, a lot of my family's gone to and um, to play football there. So I read somewhere that your grandma gave you some pretty great advice during the recruiting process. Can you tell us that story? Yeah, yeah. I, I got my offer and, you know, I was kind of holding out. I was I was going to see, you know, what else came along or kind of explore my other options. But um, she kind of set me straight and she was like, you know, you've, you've wanted to play for them since forever. And now that you have the opportunity, why are you waiting? So, you know, that I ended up going on that official and I just committed there. Because, I mean, she was right. I, I, didn't, I don't need anything else. And, you know, that's the place I want to be. So, you know, again, with your ties to Nebraska and, and getting that Power 5 offer, it's, it's every, every high school player's dream, right? What did it mean to you when that official offer came in? Uh, it meant a lot, especially the fact that um, Coach Rule had offered me, uh, like, halfway through camp. Uh, it just meant a lot to see what that, you know, he saw something in me and um, – to be able to go play for the school my dad played for and, you know, play for that great uh, historical program. And, you know, we should be good in the next few years. And, you know, it, it's just going to go from there. Well, um, you know, the camp part of it has this coaching staff has said is going to be really important that they want to find talent throughout the camps. What, how important is that? And especially for a player like you, that you can't have that opportunity to maybe be seen and, and get an offer at a camp. Yeah, absolutely. It's super important, especially like being from Montana. There's not really a lot of recruiting going on up here. It's mostly in-state schools. Not a lot of out-of-state schools look up here. So me being able to go down to camps, um, not even just Nebraska, but just camps in general to go, go get seen and, you know, go get recruited by different bigger schools is, is great. It's a great opportunity. What does that mean to you personally to be an example for those those recruits, those football players, young football players in the state of Montana that you can get an offer like Nebraska? Uh, it means a lot. I've had a, I've had a few guys from smaller schools in Montana text me and be like, "What does it take?" And I just I just tell them, you know, just work hard, go to camp, show out, and you know, you should get that. Oh, you know what I mean. Um, but it just means a lot to be one of the first few kids out of Montana to go play Power Five football, and yeah. You were first team All State wide receiver and first team All State punter. How did you get into punting, and what do you like about being able to be the punter for your high school team? Um, <laughs> so the punting just started, uh, probably freshman year. I punted for varsity a little bit and, you know, it's just kind of gone from there. Um, I'm, I don't claim to be a punter, but I, I can punt a ball pretty well, but, um, uh, yeah, I, I just had a great year punting and man, I had, a, uh, my coach set me up for success in special teams, whether that was field goals or punting. So, um, yeah, that, that's where they all stay comes from. <laughs> So how, how much fun is it to get to do something different and be able to help your team in a different way like that? Uh, it's super fun, especially in, like, practice, not even in games, just practice, just messing around with the special teams kids and, you know, kicking long field goals or doing some weird punt stuff. It, it, it's fun. And, you know, once you get in a game, there's opportunities to fake the ball and, you know, make game-winning plays while kicking a field goal or, you know, getting a return to muff a punt, you know what I mean? So it's fun. It, it kind of mixes it up a little bit just from catching the ball and playing defense. So it's, it's a fun little twist for sure. Not a lot of players can say they are first-team All-State and uh, wide receiver and, and punting, so or two different positions like that. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, you know, you, we've talked about your dad, uh, Ken Clark, and, and what he did here. What does that mean to you to be able to be a legacy, to come here and, and to play where he played and wear the same uniform that he wore? Uh, it means a lot, and I, I think we got we got a few we got a we got a bunch of legacy players yeah. in the 2024. So it means a lot, and I know it'll mean a lot for all of us just to be able to play together. And I know a lot of us, our dads, actually played on the same team at the same time. So um, you know, it, it's going to be a lot, and I think that'll be a good binding factor, a little team bonding thing. Um, but it, it just means a lot to be able to carry on his legacy at the school and kind of do some of the same things he did. What do you think he would have said when you committed to Nebraska? Um, I think kind of like my grandma, he would have, he would have kind of set me straight. He, he, would, he wouldn't have been so nice about it, but um, <laughs> he, would, he would have been like, I don't know what you're doing. You're a knucklehead or something like that. <laughs> but um, he, he definitely would have been proud of me. And he, I mean, he'd just say, get back to work, honestly. He'd be like, don't let it go to your head for sure. I love it. Coach McGuire was at your house recently. How's that been developing the, the relationship with, with Garrett McGuire? 
Yeah, I love Coach G. He's, he's, a, he's a great guy. It's super easy to connect with him just from him being so young, and he already knows so much stuff about football. I, I love. I think he has a great IQ, and, you know, I think we're going to have a good relationship throughout the years and in the wideout room. I read somewhere where you said, you know, one of the things that you liked about Nebraska is that you feel like they're going to help you be the best that you can be. Why do you feel that, that Nebraska can help you be the best that you can be? Um, there's a couple of reasons. I think Coach Rule, I think the way he recruits and the way he coaches is amazing. Um, you know, he doesn't just go fishing for the portal for everybody he needs. He recruits out of high school, so he knows he can develop those high school players and, you know, make them to who they want to be and who he wants them to be um, and make them into game, uh, game changers, you know what I mean? So I think Coach Rule has a lot to do with that, and I think that coaching staff and all the players buy into that, and, you know, that's, that's why I think that Nebraska is a place where I can succeed. Great perspective. All right, so, so you're a big track star too, but uh, what goes into these next few months for you to be ready and, and to be able to come here in the summer and, and take care of business and, and do what's needed for you when you get here? Um, just, continue, just continuing to work hard, you know, just being in the weight room and, you know, getting out and like sprinting once, once or twice a week, just keeping up my speed, keeping um, my weight, and, uh, you know, just keep working hard, really. It's, it's, I, I'll do track in the spring, you know, I'm just lifting right now, and I'll go to the field every once in a while, but pretty soon there's going to be three feet of snow on the ground. So <laughs> that, that go out the window, but, you know, just working hard and, you know, just staying focused on what's ahead of me. All right. I got some fun questions to ask you. Let Husker fans get to know you a little bit more. Uh, who was your favorite player or athlete, any sport growing up? <sighs> That's tough. I want to say like, um, I like Randy Moss and I like uh, Odell. Cause I, I know when I was in like, third grade or something he made a crazy he made the crazy catch and we were all doing that in recess and so I like Odell but I also like Randy Moss and then like currently it's probably like T Higgins or something just because we're similarly like the same height and we play the same position so um but for like basketball like I like um LeBron golf Tiger Woods I like to golf a lot um Tiger's my guy um so yeah oh so a golfer too yeah, I, I golf probably twice, twice, twice a uh, week in the summer with my friends. So nice. You'll be able to to join. There's a big golfing group of of players that go golfing a lot here uh, throughout the summer. You'll be able to join that group. So this might be the answer to the next question. Then, what's your favorite hobby outside of football? Definitely, just uh, golf. I like golf a lot. It's very frustrating sometimes though because <laughs> you have the best day of life or you have the worst day of life, and you just want to break all your clubs. You know what I mean? But Philia, yeah. Um, yeah. Definitely uh, hobbies just being outside. Like my life has always been sports. There's not really a time where I'm not doing something that involves running or jumping or anything like that. But you know, golf is a nice way to calm down. So I would say golf is like basically one of my hobbies in the summer. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Favorite cereal? Ooh. Ah, that's tough. I like Fruit Loops. Uh Fruit Loops. I used to like Lucky Charms, but they're a little too too much sugar for me now. So Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops are definitely one of mine. Definitely, yeah, it's just Fruit Loops. Oh, Frosted Flakes, Frosted Flakes. I like Frosted Flakes more than Fruit Loops. That's what it is. Okay, I think you're the first guy to say Fruit Loops, so so uh, like that. And um, Spotify Wrapped. Are you a Spotify guy? Who's your number one yeah. artist on Spotify? Drake, Drake for sure. Drake, <laughs> probably followed up by like some Rihanna, and then probably like uh, like some Uzi or some Playboy Cardi. Okay, last question for you. I want you to rank these cookie flavors, all right? So I got four and rank them. Fourth being the worst, one being the best, okay? Chocolate chip, peanut butter, macadamia nut, and oatmeal raisin. All right, macadamia nut is last, first of all. <laughs> oatmeal raisin is third. I like oatmeal raisin, don't get me wrong, but chocolate chip is first, and second is going to be peanut butter. Because uh, chocolate chip, that basic cookie, is like, it, it's the, you can't go wrong with it. All right, I love it, I love it. Quinn Clark, appreciate your time. Great stuff. And um, can't wait to see you here come this summer. And uh, best luck in the track season. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. And that is Quinn Clark, the wide receiver out of Montana. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. All right, got to get to our final break here on Sports Nightly on this Monday night edition. But coming up next, our weekend winners, Cole and Henry, are going to join me. Keep it here on Sports Nightly.
Get ready to rule the field and revolutionize your farming game with Valley, the game changer in irrigation and ag tech solutions. With time and labor saving measures, ground truthing results, and effective input reduction, Valley provides the perfect game plan so you stay ahead of what's in the field. From the best in irrigation and cutting edge ag tech solutions to personalized support, Valley is your winning team. Visit your local Valley dealer or valleyirrigation.com today. Save now during the Start Something New sales event happening now at Woodhouse Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram in Blair. Right now, lease the 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Altitude for $399 per month. Grand Cherokee is the most luxurious vehicle in its class. Based on Summit model offerings and the latest Ward's Middle Sport Utility Vehicle segment. Excludes other FCA US LLC vehicles. Based on the latest available competitive information. Lease for 27 months, 10,000 miles per year. For well-qualified returning lease customers. With approved credit. Tax tied license extra. $1,999 down plus first payment and $299 dot fee to its signing. Stock number C240394. Offer expires 131.24. See dealer for details. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Let's create yours with a built Ford Tough truck. Ford F-150 with impressive max towing capability and available pro trailer backup assist. So navigating tight spaces is as easy as turning a knob. Plus, with available pro power on board, you have power on demand. Be future ready with Ford F-150. Now get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Woodhouse Auto Family is your trusted auto partner with 20 brands and 20 convenient sales and service locations. We're making car buying on your terms. Visit us online at woodhouse.com. Final segment here of Sports Nightly, and uh, we're going to do our weekend winners. We haven't been able to do this in a while, so Cole, you are up first. My winner goes out to any Husker fan that made it out to that duel Friday night. Absolutely. That was, that was rough weather, and so fact that they got the turnout they did i know they didn't get the outcome outcome they wanted but um yeah impressed by that so yeah really all week too as you heard coach hoiberg talking about the purdue game that wasn't ideal either so the way that husker fans showed up despite the weather absolutely i agree all right henry who you got um, i'm gonna go with the husker tennis team um because they swept in back-to-back -back duels against uh, north dakota and creighton nice Absolutely. Great start for Husker men. I'm surprised either one of you went with NFL, like the Lions, Detroit. No? Okay, well, my winner, so Cole, remember last week, you, or I guess on Friday, weather was bad. You just talked about it, and you had me go get your food at Pickleman's for, yes, uh, because you, were, you couldn't, yeah, I couldn't get out. You, you were guys kind couldn't enough leave. To, you were kind enough to offer to go get us some yeah. food, some dinner. Yep. So, and you guys were having trouble, like there were a lot of places that were closed, weren't open, just wasn't easy to get to, they weren't delivering. And so right. uh, we went over there and um, I picked it up and then also ordered food. And I gotta tell you, and I, I didn't get his name, but the coworker or the workers in there were so great. It was busy. They had such a great attitude and, um, you know, were receptive to the people walking through the door. I'm like, you know what, that's what it's all about. But also, you know, the workers that have been working on the roads, not easy, it was just a, uh, Man, you want to talk about a grind, staying on, on top of all the roads and stuff. But uh, shout out to all you guys that had to work throughout this weather and, and uh, make us food like Cole and Camden who were working on a Friday night uh, for basketball and, and had such a great attitude about it. And then, yeah, those guys that are running all the, the trucks and clearing out the roads for us to be able to get in and out, to be able to work. Appreciate you guys so much. All right, that's going to do it for Sports Nightly. We have Damon Benning going to co-host with me tomorrow night here on Sports Nightly. Have a great Monday evening. Thanks to Colin Camden. Thanks to Colin Henry. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. In America, the future belongs to everyone. Let's create yours with a built Ford Tough truck. Ford F-150 with impressive max towing capability and available pro trailer backup assist. So navigating tight spaces is as easy as turning a knob. Plus, with available pro power on board, you have power on demand. Be future ready with Ford F-150.
Now get 2.9% financing for 72 months on a new 2023 Ford F-150. Only at your Midwest Ford dealers. It's time for some Nebraska farm facts. Want to know a fast way to rev up our Nebraska economy while helping the planet? It's right in your tank. When you fill up with clean soy-based biodiesel, you're increasing Nebraska biodiesel production while reducing greenhouse gases by up to 74%. So look for biodiesel where you fill up. It benefits our air, our economy, and our farmers. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers, growing opportunity from the ground up. Bananas are only 39 cents a pound at hy V. That's not a sale price. That's the price with the hy V Perks membership. And 39 cents a pound is not just the price today or this week. It's the Perks price every day. With the hy V Perks membership, you can save on hundreds of products store-wide every time you shop and count on Perks prices to stay the same. So if you want to pay less for bananas every day, sign up for hy V Perks. It's free and easy. Some restrictions apply. Maybe your hometown celebrates long-standing Swiss traditions, cow chip throwing, or even classic car muscle. Everyone has a hometown, and every hometown has a festival. Senex wants to hear about yours. That's why we're launching the Hometown Throwdown. Tell us about your fest, and it could win $100,000. 